Shout out to all my conscious readers and conscious writers out there. It's your boy Ian, aka The Writing Renegade, here today to talk about how to read 200 books a year. And if you guys are looking for dope series on literature and personal development tools for writers and artists, book reviews, you name it, it's on this channel. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, say what's up. But first, let's get back to talking about 200 books a year in a presentation format. And that may seem like a lot to you guys because reading 100 books a year is two books a week. Reading 50 books a year is one book a week. And that's probably what the avid readers in the audience are doing, 50 or 100 books, somewhere in that range, maybe a little bit over. And when I read, say read 200 books a year, I don't mean YA novels or fantasy novels or romance novels. I am talking, and those count too, whatever. But I'm talking about books that can change your life. Books that will change your inner consciousness, either fiction or nonfiction poetry. These are things that are going to shake your reality and force you to grow. And there can be a couple fantasy books laced in there. There are a ton with really political and emotional messages that can happen. But if we are going to create an avatar that can change the world through knowledge that can help spread knowledge out to the world and raise global consciousness, you're going to have to be reading a very diverse group of books. So just to get that out of, out of the way, then a couple of you guys out there might be reading one, two or three books a year, barely reading at all. But no matter what, the 10 tips I lay out today are going to help you read more books. And if you follow the advice I give, you will be able to read all 200 books and your lifestyle won't even change. What you're doing, there's going to be some minor differences. Obviously, you're reading four books a, a fucking week, but you will still get a lot more done than you are now because of the organization of having to read. When you are living a distracted, a non-meaningful, a disconnected life, you can't. your whole life is that way. And if you can add the habit of reading a lot in, then other habits like working out and relationships and art all come easier. So let's talk about the 10 tips. The first one, and this is one I know it's going to piss off the most amount of people and the viewers rate's going to be like, do, 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 boom. When I say this one, you have to read at work. So everyone who's leaving now is saying, well, I can't read at work. I have a house payment or my boss is right there. Um, you know, guys, if you guys are going to make excuses like that about a job that you hate that's exploiting you, then maybe you should quit that job anyway and find a job that's a lot more easier where you can work on yourself in the interim so you can pay your bills. That's that's my advice right now. But you have to read at work. We spend how much time at work, If even if we include commute times with audiobooks, probably 10 hours. 50 hours a week, 40 to 50 hours a week. Even my part-timers out there working 20 hours a week. So much time is spent at work. And a lot of that work is going to go down the drain. All those systems that you were running and equations you were solving and projects you were working on, those aren't going to mean, those are going to mean squat for your personal development and who you are trying to become in in, in no amount of time, in one day, once it's over, it's over. I guess it can help you stay focused and get things done and create self-esteem. But risking it and reading at your job. And some of you guys have jobs and you guys are on your phones. People are on their phone all day at their job. That's what's crazy. And I'm just kidding. People are doodling around. They're on email. They're doing so much. You are not the exception to this rule. You are not in the gulag. Who? What am I even talking about? You know how much time you waste at freaking work every day in meetings and senseless stuff? You could get what you're doing. You could be reading because all that time you were wasting could be better spent reading. So you need to read at work. Hook or crook, no matter what you're doing, man. I have been fired from two jobs for reading. One as a lifeguard and one as a security guard. For As a lifeguard, I said, if you're getting into a pool of water and you're not confident that you can swim because it was an adult pool on the Las Vegas Strip, I was like, then you know what I mean? It's not really my job to save you. If I, if I, you know, if I see you, I'll save you. But 
I wasn't the best lifeguard and I would be reading. I had like a little lifeguard fanny pack and I'd have it. And I had like, I would buy these pocketbooks and I'd be reading these little pocketbooks, man. I read all of Dickens and uh, a bunch of the classics. They were like these mini books. I can't remember what they were called, but uh, they were kind of expensive, but I would just be turning. But then uh, I got caught doing it like five different times. And eventually they're like, you're fired. And there was this big meeting. They're like, you know, you keep lying to us and say, you're going to stop. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to be out of here. You guys are stuck here for the rest of your life. You're stuck working for Caesars Entertainment forever. I'm out. So and by then at a security job, I was working once again down on the strip at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center doing security. And I just kept reading, bro. I was reading Moby Dick. And if anyone's ever read Moby fucking Dick, you know that there's like four pages of like the whaling inventory of the ship. There's just these. So I was just like, Ugh. I was just caffeinated. I was working like graveyard shifts. And once again, this job, I actually wasn't doing anything. I was sitting in a chair at post. And it was just the fact that I had a book because people were always on the phone. There was always something going on. We were always doing something, but <laughs> man and this boss he would come out and he'd be like this big big white guy be like, what were you doing reading the books <laughs> and i'd be like oh sorry man uh well, make sure i stop i'll stop and then dude yeah i got fired and he, he was like we're gonna have to let i was like i'm all, i'm out of here but i'm not even gonna listen to you, you your ass talk so those are my two experiences getting fired and now i work a job where i can read at work almost the whole time i'm at work and that's not going to be my job forever. But that's literally the reason why I got this job is because I can work, do other things while I'm working and get paid enough to live. So those jobs do exist, everybody. Anyway, I also have a friend. Shout out Cole Boverman, everybody. I think he's dead now. Uh, rest in peace, man. But he got fired. He, he was a lifty at a ski resort we used to work at. We used to both be lifties, man. And, uh, you know... And he got fired because he was reading, but I would read all the time too. But he just got really unlucky because some kid fell and the mom was like, and he didn't see he was supposed to stop the ski lift. And the mom came running over and was like, what are you doing? And he, and, and, you know, you know, Cole was, you know, smoking some weed back in the day. And, uh, <laughs> uh, he just, he took him a really long time to get out of the book and he was like, what? And yeah, he got fired for that. So anyway, I've, I, I've been through it. I get it. I felt the nerves. I've been in a lot of jobs where I've gone away with it and I've had to hide it and it's nerve wracking. It's a lot. But if you work a job on the computer, you could be doing that the whole time. And if your company's monitoring what you're doing, there's a lot of ways to get around that, everybody. FYI. So that is tip number one, everybody. Read at work. Find a way, even if it's on bathroom breaks, lunch breaks. I've been at jobs before, man, where I would take like, a five minute bathroom break, 10 minute bathroom break every single hour. If they were jobs that I couldn't like get away with reading or doing other things. At. So I would just be like, Oh my God, I'm so, I gotta go to the bathroom. And I just would be gone. Or I go to the bathroom like five times an hour for like one minute each. And I would just be in there reading, bro. You got to hustle. That's what, all these tips, man. This is about the hustle. So boom, there it is, everybody. Let's move on. So second tip, you have to commit to Finish every book you start. And this is going to tie in with number five, which is review, review and then read. But no matter what happens, man, you have to finish the book. Because if you're making progress, like why are you reading shitty books? Like I have not read a book that wasn't handed to me by some self-published author at some writing group that has sucked. Everything on this bookshelf is objective fire and should be finished by everyone that starts it. Because... I am getting these books not from my own consciousness. I don't get on Amazon and go to the bookstore and be like, wow, that's really, that looks really good. <laughs> oh my God. I get a book. I First of all, you need to read what your favorite authors recommend. You need to type in, like I'm looking at Haruki Mir. I see a Haruki Mirakami book, favorite book, and then see who he likes and you know see if you like some of those authors. And then look at reviews on Goodreads of those authors. We'll just talk about two and five right now. Yeah. And, you know, I have learned so much and found so many weird books by figuring out what all other authors like. 
And then you can figure out what those other authors like that you read because you're reading 200 books a year now. You have time to have favorite authors and explore different authors and their favorite authors. And if you do this and if you double check with reviews on Amazon and Goodreads, you will only be reading good books and books that you can finish. Once again, books that you can finish. And I know that we're kind of late right now in, in, in this. If you've made it this far, thank you. But I should have done this at the start. There's some math in our head that we can do to figure out how much time it's going to take to read those 200 books. I would say it's probably about, we'll call it a five hour average to finish a book. That's how, that's my average. If I look at my words per read, you can calculate your words per read and then, or per minute, excuse me, read, and then uh, calculate that into, you know, the average length of books you're reading. A usual 250 page book is about a hundred thousand words. So, and I think the average reading speed is maybe like 600, 800. I don't, don't quote me on that. That, that the math, but I'm just saying five hours, five hours seems pretty reasonable. So it would be a thousand hours. And there's a, I think 160 hours in every week. And we times that by 50. I'm just going to give a rough estimate that that's near a hundred thousand hours um let me let me do the math right now hours in a week let's do hours in a year oh my gosh what am i doing hours in a year we have eight thousand hours in a year everybody so you know one eighth of that time would be spent reading and once again if this is a commitment for personal development then you can do it no matter what you can do it so, and once again, this is mastery. If you do this or you only get a hundred books a year and you do it for a couple decades, then you are going to have that 10,000 hours of knowledge. And then you are going to be a smart person because guess what? I'm not a smart person yet. There's so much stuff that I still need to get into. I can, yeah, you're the, I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm the smartest guy in this neighborhood right now. Don't, I'm not, don't even, don't even in this zip code. But that doesn't mean I'm smart. That doesn't mean that I'm not that I don't know my intellectual holes because there are holes in my thinking. A lot of people don't like to think about this, but you right now have huge holes in your thinking, huge holes in your thought process that are limiting you from becoming great, from becoming a person who has transcended a lot of the basic flaws of humanity. And a lot of these are conditioning. You have been conditioned in a certain way by society, by your parents, by trauma, and your beliefs are attached to that and the rigidity of those beliefs. And you don't see that because once again, you are not around smart enough people to call out those idiosyncrasies in your behavior, in your intellectual thoughts. Because dude, I can argue and have the craziest theories because I have so much other knowledge that when, if I have to go against somebody or check it in my own head, it all checks out. But that's because it's all coming from the same source and it's like a confirmation bias almost within our brain. So commit and finish everything you start. If it's, you can tell within the first couple of pages if it's going to be some trash. So, that, so, you know, I'm talking about a couple, you know, a chapter or two in, you're going to know, and it's time to bail early. Don't be reading self-published authors that are local authors giving you stuff. You'll know when they're good. If they're good that, you know, they'll give you that. They'll be that look in their eye, man. They'll be like that. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff exists. And People who work hard are the people's work you want to read. The people who have put in the 10,000 hours, who have put in the, the, I think it's 20 hours a week, if I'm not mistaken, of reading, if it's four books times five, 20 hours a week for 10 years in a row. So, um, number three is, Read, do audiobooks all the time. And you need to be doing audiobooks because, and guess what, everybody? I know Audible sucks and no Audible is expensive, but guess what? When there is a will and there is a way and everything on the internet exists for free if you know where to look. All books too. I don't even know if we need, I don't even know if I need to talk about that, but if you don't know where to find every book, with for your own budget. We'll just say that if you want to find book at any budget, even if you are impoverished and homeless, then you need to go deeper into the internet. So audiobooks, everybody. And I'm just saying that if you can afford a book, 
pay full price for the book. Pay the author directly if you can on their website. Don't let the middleman get in the way. Pay the author, support the author, hype the author. But if you can't afford something, you can't afford something. And you are trying to change the world. If you are listening to this right now, you need to get in gear and start moving toward elevating once again or lowering, either helping us see the light or the shadow of consciousness. So and by any means necessary. All right. So audiobooks, everybody. I do audiobooks a couple hours a day because I love to work out. I love to do yoga for a couple hours a day. So that's happening. And this is making up time. And audiobooks go a lot slower, but they don't go that much slower. And if you have a commute to work every day, audiobooks. And I actually really like motive personal development audiobooks on the way, like when I'm going to work and maybe not so much, but really when I'm going to work, I like maybe a little bit of pump up music or whatever, but to make me feel happy for, you know, having to go to slit to the corporate, uh, wasteland. But I like to listen to some personal development stuff, you know, Brian Tracy, uh, let's see, uh, Seth Godin, like just stuff like that. That's really inspirational and also very intellectual for personal development. So also before I'm going, as I'm getting ready and I'm cooking and I'm cleaning audiobooks, working out audiobooks, 10,000 steps a day, audiobooks. So I'm getting a couple hours a day in of audiobooks, which, you know, I probably get about two of the five, what is it? Four books a week. Yeah. Four books a week, maybe one, 1 1.5 to two books a week, depending on the length done just through audiobooks. So all the time that you're working and stuff, you can get to 200 in different ways, everybody. That's what I'm trying to say. It is 100% possible for you to do this just through audiobooks with all the time that you're just doing stuff. So take audiobooks seriously. Get some wireless earbuds. Uh, I would I use the Galaxy Buds live because they're... I don't think I have them right here, but I think it would be a good thing to show... Um, they have a bean shape. They're like shaped like a bean. The Galaxy Bud is live. And they're kind of weird on the ear. You have to get used to Oh, here they are. Oh, my God. So, look. They're this shape right here. And they go in my ear. And the reason I use these, even though they look funky and they're not Apple, like you Apple freaks out there love. The reason I got these over AirPods is because I can lay down with these. I can lay down and it doesn't, the, it, nothing is sticking out and smushing. It's literally lays flat in my, it lays flat in your ear. So that's really important for me because I get in bed every night and like at the same time I get to bed early and I kind of lay there sometimes for 30 minutes and I, I get a nice bedtime story. Right now I'm listening to, uh, what am I listening to? John Brown, about John Brown, the slave ab abolitionist, you know, the slave, you know, help kick off in, in the American Civil War, like helping slaves escape. Really crazy story, mind blowing stuff. So, yeah, audiobooks all the time, everybody. Live in the audiobook world, get into it. Audible um, offers discounts every once in a while. You can, you know, get books for pretty cheap off of Audible. So, so next is replace all meaningless distractions with reading and Instagram and let dude let let's be real here unless you're trying to build an, an a business on Instagram you don't need to be spending that much time on Instagram unless you're trying to pick up guys or chicks or something you, you don't need to be on Instagram you don't need to be on Facebook you don't need to be on social media you don't need to be watching the news there's so much negative garbage that's getting input in your brain that could be replaced if you just listen to audiobooks while you were doing random activities and replace reading with every time you checked your phone or stuff online like news you would could probably get 200 books a year. You'd be pretty damn close. I mean, you're getting over 100 for sure. You're shooting over 100. And and whatever, just to go back, whatever, if, if, if you guys have limiting beliefs about audiobooks like I did for a while, like, oh, I can't listen to an audiobook. You just really need to get into the vibe. You just need to really put some time in and find good books. There's certain books that are good for audiobooks. I really like, the, and so... I really like history, everybody, like history books for audiobooks because it's a story. If you find a good writer, it gets crazy because like you start just finished. Um, what's it called? Oh, my gosh. Uh, the Land of the Rising Sun, I think. Um, 
It's a book on World War II by John Toland. Let's see, John Toland, Japan, the right, the Rising Sun, and you know, blew my mind about the Pacific Theater in World War II. Oh, and we've gone all the way back. So that's just whatever you can find. Find something that you enjoy. Sometimes I can't really do fiction. I very rarely listen to fiction on audiobooks. The last time I did that was probably The Gunslinger by Stephen King like two years ago. And maybe The Martian by Andy Weir because uh, I everyone was always talking about the book. So I was like, what's going on here? And I had a 10-hour drive, so I got that done. All right, book. Probably won't ever review it on here. but So meaningless distractions, everybody. That goes into a lot of this. This is all kind of ties together. Like just replace reading with negative things with positive reading habits. So Goodreads, everybody. I would recommend joining Goodreads. Everybody add me on Goodreads. Create account. I have a link below. Hit me up, Ian James Cadnack. You know the deal. And yeah, that's it. Just say what's up. You can check in with my 200 books. Uh, my 200 book journey this year and i am trying to review 200 books this year also everybody so stay tuned for that i'm very behind on the review part on the reading part i'm pretty on track i'm thinking i'm at like 50 something right now and we're in april so i'm i'm basically cruising right now i would say yeah well eh, i'm a little behind the so yeah everyone hop on Goodreads so that you can figure out reviews. So the reason you come on Goodreads is so that you can do reviews and get some extra motivation, some external motivation, which is tip number 10. And read through the reviews because every single book you're going to read, there's going to be five stars and they're going to be like, yo, this sucked. But don't look for spoilers. Just read the first sentence or two and you'll see real fast. Like if I'm reading a book and I I'll go look and the only one stars are just SJWs or old people or like really not creative people. Or, I don't understand what's going on. They're, this is, you know, they don't treat women the right way. Or like, you know, there's some random thing about the book, but then there's uh, 80 other reviews that are like, this is the greatest thing I've ever read. So I'm like, hmm, okay. There might be a little bit of misogyny in here, but uh, if you read, that's about every book. Maybe not every book, but... <laughs> Maybe I'm just reading really bad fiction, but I feel like, you know, most books and what all the stuff I write, I just try to make things as bad as possible for the characters and make it as interesting as I can. So sometimes you just, I mean, if it's not misogyny, it's going to be like some other weird fetish or some other weird thing going on. So, you know, uh, every book, every book should be a little bit screwed up. So, you know, when people are triggered by that, I'm kind of like, all right. Okay, next, number, I think we're on number six, is reading on your phone or your tablet. This is something that you, sh you can do at work, in line, out at a stoplight today. You know, I shouldn't be recommending this, but reading at stoplights, if you're like in a city like I am and you're just stuck at stoplights all the time, I'll literally pause the audiobook, take out the phone, read for literally two minutes as I sit here and wait for this long ass light and then turn on the audiobook again and I'm on the way. So <laughs> it's pretty funny, but you can get a lot done this way. All the random times you have your phone and you're stuck somewhere doing something, you can just be reading through a book. I have certain books on a phone that I read. I read um, fiction, like self-public fiction or like kind of light fiction on the phone sometimes. I have a lot of buddies and stuff who are writers, so I'm always reading their stuff on the phone. That's always, like I said, you have to find stuff that works. I don't need to buy the paper copy of some, you know, mediocre self-published novel that, you know, I feel like I should read because like they read my stuff. And <laughs> so I just read it on the phone and I'm just kind of, you know, going through it. It's not like the biggest deal in the world. I'm not taking notes or anything. I'm just reading it because, you know, that's my friend. So reading in the bathroom, everybody, the famous Pulp Fiction scene where he's reading and he gets killed. You got to read it in the bathroom. I have books in the bathroom that exclusive bathroom books because sometimes i just you know i take baths a couple times a week uh, epsom salt baths i take dumps i take peas and every time i take a pee the book's right next to it and i take a pee and i read like a, a page or two and that's that's the that's the ticket if you start reading and you know you take a pee for 30 seconds stay in there for another minute reading like get to a point on the page and be like all right i just read two pages how many peas do you take a day maybe 10 I mean, I mean, if you look at the time in there, you might be able to get 20 or 30 pages in. And if you times that by 1,000 or 365, 
20 pages a day times 365. You know, what is that? 3,600? Yeah. So, and if we're looking at 300 page books, that's like 15 books. Boom. Just reading on the, on the pot gave you, just added 15 to the toll. So if we're looking at everything, man, if I'm just doing a rough estimate right now, reading at work, if you get 15 done, which these are things you don't do right now. Reading at work, 15. Committing to every book you start, five. Audiobooks, 20. So we'll say we're at 40. Meaningless tasks with reading, probably 30. Review, then read, probably another 20. Phone on tablet, another 15. Read in the bathroom, another 15. So I don't know what we're at, but we're maybe at, we're over 100 now. And I'm lowball on these numbers. And this is all in addition, everybody. All this stuff is in addition to you sitting down and reading when you normally read. That's the other thing I should mention. You you start doing all these hacks, don't forget to read when you're supposed to read. Don't forget to read when you're just hanging out and you actually have time to read and all the downtime you have in life. When you're not, the, all these things are like doing it on the fly or doing it in kind of obscured ways. But when you actually can read, that's when the majority of your reading should get done because you can focus. Like right now, I'm reading The Grail Legend by Emma Jung and Maurice von Fraz or whatever her name is. And it's hard work, man. I can't read that. I have to be like committed to it. When I'm reading critical theory, you have to be committed to these things. So next is reading. Outside, everybody. Reading outside gives you a lot of energy and it's an incentive to help get you out there, man. You need to be spending more time in nature, at parks, in whatever, forests, deserts, what's ever around you. If you're living in a winter wasteland, I'm sorry. But in the summer, you need to read outside, man, for vitamin D and for health and to have a good time. It's like a pastime, like reading outside. That's like something that we've been doing for a long time because it's nice. So make sure to read outside, everybody. It will help you get a lot more done. And it's fun, man. Certain types of books when you're outside and it's a weekend or something, you got some time off. It's a definite mood, man. It's a definite mood. There's another reading outside. So I don't have the right uh, number nine doesn't have a photo, but reading before bed. I like to read a couple pages before bed. Once again, man, if you read five or 10 pages before bed and we times that by 365, I think the other one was 6,000. I think 20 times 365 is going to be in the 7,000, 8,000 range, but I'm not a mathematician. Anyway, you probably get another 10 books done per year by reading in bed. And it's a good habit I to turn off all your electronics and do a little bit of reading. It makes going to bed easier. Then I put some red light blockers on and put my earbuds in and turn on an audio book. So I have minimum exposure to blue light and green light and like bright LEDs. So last everybody, but not least, is reading, finding a social group, joining Goodreads, finding a book club. But the most important thing is finding friends to read books with. This can, I read one book a month with six different friends. So let, let's look at that. So I read 12 times 6, 72. There we go. First, right math today. I read 72 books a year with friends. That's already one third of the way. And we keep up with each other. And we talk about books when we finish. Whenever we finish, which is once a month, and it's all kind of staggered, you know, roughly once a month, we talk about it. We hop on a Google Meet. We meet up in person. We grab coffee. Even during COVID, all throughout COVID, you know, lockdown didn't stop this party from going on. You can't stop the book party. But I have friends all across the world I talk books with. And there's six people, though, that I do it consistently with. Uh, you know, one being you should do it with your uh, spouse. One being my girlfriend. We read a book, the same book, every single month. And then on top of this, I'm in the three other groups where I read books. So 100 books a year, I'm reading with other people. That's crazy. And we come to these conclusions together. Almost half of the books, everybody, are read with other people and it's co-creative. That's the most motivating thing at all because if I don't finish the book and use all these different methods, then I can't talk about the book with my buddies. We can't sit down and have laughs and be like, what the hell was that? Like That was terrible. Like, what was that character thinking? We can't have, that's the best part of reading, being able to talk about it with other people. And that's what this channel is, everybody. Leave a comment if you are into reading and want to connect about reading. I am a reader. I want to talk to other readers and other writers. This is a community. And 
I'm literally, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to assemble the greatest groups, group of readers, writers, and spiritual people around me, and then share that with the world. Take what they give me and bring it out to the world. Give them opportunities to display their work and help elevate them, or they can help elevate me. Like whatever it is, that's what I'm trying to do. And if you feel like you're one of those people, say what's up. So that is the end of the video. If you're saying what's up, then you could also subscribe. If you were just a silent listener watching, thank you for making this far. Maybe I'll see you again on the interwebs. Peace.